Previously, I've compared AMD's flagship Ryzen CPUs against each other. Today, I'm putting yet another three generations of Ryzen 9 CPUs up against each other. This time around, it's the 7900X versus 5900X versus 3900X. So we are once more pretty much looking at the comparison between Zen 4, 3 and 2. Is it even worth it to upgrade? Let's start things off with the price. In February 2023, the 7900X goes for like 450 to 500 US dollars, whereas for the direct predecessor 5900X, you're shelling out 340 to 400 dollars. For the 3900X, I'm not listing any prices since those have become rather unrealistic due to the product's age, cores, and threats. AMD apparently stays true to their core and thread count throughout three generations here. We are talking of 12 cores and 24 threads respectively. Specifications. As you all might know, the 5900X and 3900X are home to the AM4 socket. A 7900X on the other hand needs to be installed into the new AM5 socket and additionally needs to be paired with DDR5 RAM. On paper, the TDP from Zen 2 and 3 to Zen 4 certainly went up, but same can be said about clock speeds in a more positive way. The recent model additionally comes equipped with integrated Radeon graphics. Test setup. For the Zen 4 CPU, I'm going with the ASRock X670E Pro RS motherboard. For Zen 3 and 2, I'm using my trusty ASRock X570 PG Melegita. Taking on the role of pixel acceleration is the ASUS RTX 3090 Tough Gaming OC graphics card. As RAM for AM5, I'm using the Kingston Fury Beast RGB 32GB DDR5 6000MHz CL36 kit. And as far as the AM4 systems are concerned, G-Skill Flare X DDR4 3200MHz CL14 with 16GB. Now, don't worry, I made sure the capacity did not influence any of those test results. Clock speeds. Not much of a surprise, AMD is going all in here. From one generation to another, there is a noteworthy increase in clock speed noticeable. We see the biggest improvement on Zen 4 though, with today's 7900X. Similarly impressive jumps can be seen in the boost behavior. Undoubtedly, Zen 4 is taking the crown here. Performance, productivity. In Cinebench R23, things sure look spicy. Coming from Zen 2 to 3 in the multi-core test, we're looking at a performance gain of nearly 21%. Coming from Zen 3, Zen 4 is taking it up a notch with the 7900X offering an improvement of a whopping 31%. That's crazy. Not necessarily any less impressive are the results in the single-core test. After all, Zen 3 is performing 21% better here than Zen 2. Zen 4, however, is even 27% better than Zen 3. In the 7-zip benchmark, Zen 3 is doing roughly 17% better than Zen 2. Zen 4 is speeding up nicely though, ultimately being 35% faster than Zen 3. Moving on to V-Ray 5. Here a 5900X performs 23% better than a 3900X. A 7900X then is capable of offering a performance uplift of 34% over a 5900X. In the Corona benchmark, the Zen 3 model is rendering about 20% faster than Zen 2. Zen 4 completes the task by another 20% quicker than Zen 3. And the popular Blender rendering test, the 5900X is offering roughly 17% more performance over the 3900X. We're seeing a truly massive gain with the 7900X performing 38% better than the 5900X. Let's move on to the next test, handbrake video encoding. This is where Zen 3 completes its task 13% faster than Zen 2. A bigger gain of about 26% can be measured from Zen 3 to 4. As far as video rendering, and Vegas Pro 20 is concerned, Zen 3 offers 20% better results as opposed to Zen 2. Zen 4 on the other hand allows for a 26% increase 
and rendering speed over Zen 3. Gaming. 3D Mark Time Spy only shows an improvement of 5% from Zen 2 to 3. From Zen 3 to 4, we are dealing with 25% though. And a real game title, going by the name of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, those Zen 2 and 3 CPUs deliver, give or take, comparable results. What a bummer, meaning the 7900X allows for a 49% higher average frame rate over the 5900X. We're talking 43% as far as 1% lows are concerned. Let's turn the page and get to Borderlands 3. Here the Zen 3 model outputs a 34% higher frame rate compared to Zen 2, also offering 29% better minimum values. Zen 4 in turn does 14% better on average compared to Zen 3, does shine with its 22% lead in the 1% lows department too. Cyberpunk 2077. The 5900X delivers 25% more FPS over the 3900X, that's 30% for the 1% lows. From Zen 3 to 4, we are looking at a gain of 19%. All the more excitement comes up when glancing over to the insane 1% low improvement of 47%. Moving on to Far Cry 6, Zen 3 is able to put 24% more frames per second onto the screen as opposed to Zen 2. 13% higher minimum FPS. Coming from Zen 3 to 4, we're talking of a 17% performance gain, and even great 39% in the 1% lows. In the racing game Forza Horizon 5, all three CPUs seem to be doing fairly well. Nonetheless, the 5900X on average offers 12% higher FPS over the 3900X. The 1% lows improved by 16%. The 7900X seems to be racing 17% faster than the 5900X in terms of frame rate. Noteworthy is the 33% improvement in the 1% lows. GTA 5 usually only shows boring results, but it becomes fairly obvious a 3900X is a clear CPU bottleneck here. Zen 3 and 4 on the other hand deliver pretty much comparable results. A 5900X is almost 38% faster over a 3900X in this game, as far as 1% lows are concerned, 35% faster. More usual results can be seen in our next adventurous title, Horizon Zero Dawn. Zen 3 leads over Zen 2 by about 15%, 7.5% when it comes to minimum values. A rather impressive FPS uplift is witnessable on Zen 4 when coming from Zen 3. 20%. That's an amazing 48% when glancing over to the 1% lows. In Metro Exodus, the 5900X only offers 7% more than the 3900X, whereas Zen 3 weirdly appears to be doing worse than its predecessor by nearly 6% in the 1% lows. Weird indeed. The 7900X allows for an improvement of 10% over the 5900X, even a 31% gain in terms of minimum FPS. All settled up, we are moving on to Red Dead Redemption 2, where from Zen 2 to 3 we see a 19% improvement. There does not seem to be any increase in the 1% lows at full HD 1080p though. Zen 4 doesn't impress that much here either, with only a mere 8% uplift over Zen 3. However, we do see 18% higher 1% lows. Rise of the Tomb Raider allows Zen 3 a lead of 27% over Zen 2, 24% in terms of 1% lows. We are seeing 16% more performance with a 7900X over the 5900X. Impossible to unsee is the gain by 38% in the 1% lows. Having arrived in the final game title for today, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, from Zen 2 to 3 we see a jump of 23% on average and an impressive 47% when it comes to minimum values. We are most likely within a GPU bottleneck now, which is why Zen 4 only goes to show an FPS gain of roughly 8% here over Zen 3. We do see a massive 25% higher 1% low result though not a bad result at all. Gaming average FPS. 
When it comes to the average frame rate of the 11 games I've tested in total, we definitely see a noteworthy gain of 21% from Zen 2 to 3. From Zen 3 to 4, we are then looking at about 15%. Of course, one should also pay attention to those 1% lows. From Zen 2 to 3, we are looking at an uplift of 19%. A much bigger improvement can be witnessed once again from Zen 3 to 4, and that's by 28%. Power consumption and temperatures. Here there are quite the differences noticeable, not necessarily in a positive sense. The most power efficient one out of the bunch appears to be the 5900X based on Zen 3. Its predecessor, 3900X, after all, draws about 12% more power at full load. Compared to the 5900X, the new 7900X unfortunately already consumes 33% more power. The idle power draw between Zen 2 and 3 give or take remained the same. Zen 4, while idling, doing nothing, is however consuming 37% more power. Given the fact we are looking at the exact same core and thread count on all these three CPUs, somewhat disappointing if you're asking me. But as far as the power draw at full load is concerned, I have to let you know that there is actually some headroom for optimizations. Even with the 7950X flagship, I successfully managed to lower the amount of power it draws without having to lose any noteworthy performance. At first glance, even the temperatures might appear somewhat unappealing on Zen 4. 90 degrees Celsius is what I read out with my AIO liquid cooler. It needs to be said, though, that those Ryzen 7000X CPUs go for AMD's aggressive 95 degree temperature target. Of course, one could easily lower the temperatures through simplest optimizations. A CPU that appears to run extraordinarily cool is the 5900X, however. Conclusion. So you've clearly seen it now. Zen 4 offers that extra oomph as far as overall performance is concerned. Especially when it comes to workloads, such as video rendering, encoding and the like, that require lots of raw performance, Zen 4 truly shines with the 7900X. Depending on your circumstances, an upgrade from the 3900X or maybe even 5900X might appear viable. I would hold back if you were mainly gaming though. At the end of the day, it depends on which graphics card you've installed into your system. If you decide to put a modern high-end GPU into your PC, then a 3900X Zen 2 processor might cause one or the other CPU bottleneck. With the 5900X on the other hand, you're still doing somewhat okay. But in no way do I want to downplay the 7900X's improvements in gaming performance. Not only do we see noticeably higher FPS on average with the Zen 4 CPU, but we see just as noteworthy gains in the 1% low minimum department, leading to a smoother gaming experience in the end. Of course, the power consumption and temperatures remain drawbacks, even though by going through optimizations or simply buying a non-X variant of Ryzen 7000, you will see more appealing results in that aspect. At the end of the day, it's you that has to make the choice whether or not it makes sense to upgrade. My comparison is just meant to help you make that choice and not give you a definitive answer. With that said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.